Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today I'm here to do a haul and unhaul for January and February. <laughs> All right, everybody. So I have a very small haul for you today. I am definitely trying not to buy a ton of books. I want to get through my physical TBR and I want to just kind of also working on not bringing books into my home unless I'm absolutely excited about them or that I read them and I want to keep them. So I'm trying to keep my book buying to a minimum and that means that there's not likely going to be huge book hauls every month or even every other month. And then I also have a handful of books that I'm going to be unhauling. So I will go ahead and talk to you about the handful of books that I've hauled for January and February. And then I will also quickly run through the books that I'm going to be selling on my Pango bookshop. The very first book that I have here, the Less Housewife by Ashley Winstead. I read this in January and decided that I liked it enough to go ahead and have a copy on my shelves, but I have very complicated feelings of this. If you watched the review that I did for this in my first recent reads video of 2023, you'll know that I very much loved In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead, and so I had very high hopes for this story, especially because I was getting nothing but praise, but the execution of this fell a little bit flat. This follows our main character, Shay Evans, and one day she is listening to a true crime podcast that is actually hosted by a childhood friend of hers, and through this podcast she finds out that her college best friend has died and everybody thinks thinks that she has committed suicide. But the podcast host does not believe that to be the case and neither does Shay really. And so when the podcast host kind of pleads Shay to get in touch with him, she does. And she ends up flying into New York and meeting up with her childhood friend. And together they are going to investigate what happened to Laurel, who was the girl that died. And through their investigations, they are kind of led into this very, very dark world of a sex cult. So like I said, ultimately it was overall okay. I wanted to love this a lot more than I did. I wasn't really vibing with the cult aspect of this just because some of the messages of this cult were so far out there. It was a very patriarchal cult that was really all about dominating women and keeping them in their place and controlling them. And then you have all of these women that just really went along with it. And it was all about kind of like punishment and deserving their punishment. It just really went over my head because I couldn't relate to this and I couldn't understand how anybody would let themselves be a part of this. I understand that it is a very real phenomenon that people get themselves wrapped up in cults all of the time. But there was just something about this particular cult and the messages that I didn't really get or understand or connect to. So there was a lot of technical issues that I had with the story. It definitely wasn't nearly as strong as In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. But I will absolutely absolutely read more from Ashley Winstead in the future. This one just didn't work for me as much as I wanted it to, but I am glad still to have it on my shelves. Next, I have the beautiful illustrated edition of Royal Assassin, which is the second book in the Farseer trilogy. I read the very first book, Assassin's Apprentice with Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand, and we do plan on continuing with the buddy read of this going forward, probably around April sometime. I enjoyed the first book and excited to continue. Next, I have What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. This is one of my more anticipated releases for 2023, so I was excited when it was part of the January Book of the Month selections. This is a story that follows three friends. One of them was attacked in the woods, I believe, and then somebody got arrested, but the wrong man might have been arrested. It says, Naomi Shaw and her two friends, Cassidy and Olivia, spent the summer roaming the woods, imagining a world of ceremony and wonder. That sanctuary was suddenly shattered when Naomi was attacked. Miraculously, she survived her 17 stab wounds and lived to identify the man who hurt her. The girl's testimony put away a serial killer wanted for murdering six women. They were heroes and they were liars. For decades, the friends have kept a secret that might be worth killing or hidden in the forest, but now Olivia wants to tell the whole story. Then she goes missing and Naomi sets out to find out what really happen in the woods no matter how dangerous the truth turns out to be. I do plan on reading this soon. It is on hold at my library. It just hasn't come in yet but as soon as it does I will absolutely be reading this one. Next I have this beautiful fairy loot edition of Kingdom of the Feared by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the third and final book of her Kingdom of the Wicked series. I really enjoyed book number one. I still have to read book number two and then of course book number three but my goal is to hopefully hopefully finish this series this year especially now that it is a completed series and I have the final two books on my shelf so we'll see how that goes. I also received this beautiful Chiltern Classics edition of Emma by Jane Austen. This was the gift that I received from the Facebook gifting group that I'm a part of. This was January's book that was sent to me. I did end up reading this in January. It took me a couple of weeks. She is a chunky girl. I was not expecting Emma to be 500 pages. Holy cow, that's long, even for a contemporary today that is extremely long. And it is even more tedious when it is a contemporary classic from the early 1800s. Overall, I feel like this was a pretty positive reading experience. It definitely had some of the same flaws that I find in classics, like being a very overwritten, and again, very tedious. But overall, I'm glad that I read it. I have another Jane Austen under my belt, another classic under my belt for the year. And like I said, this is an absolutely stunning edition. Next, I have Just the Nicest Couple by Mary Kubica. This was actually the gift that I received for February from that Facebook gifting group. And it came at the perfect time because I had Mary Kubica on my TBR to try for February. I didn't realize that I was going to be reading her newest release, but it came to me and it was a sign from above that I needed to go ahead and read this. So this is a suspense thriller that is primarily following two couples. First is Nina and Jake Hayes. 
and one day Nina is concerned because Jake has not returned home. At first she doesn't really think anything of it because the night before they had a really terrible fight and Nina kind of told Jake to leave and he did and so when he didn't come home Nina just thinks that he is blowing off steam that he will come back eventually. After a couple of days he still doesn't come home and she is even more worried but some circumstances lead her to believe that Jake has kind of left her and that he's not coming back. But then she gets some calls from his work saying that Jake has not been at work and Nina knows then instantly that something is wrong because Jake is a very well respected neurosurgeon and he is extremely extremely dedicated to his job and he would never ever miss work. And so that's when Nina kind of reports it to the police. Then you're following Lily and Christian Scott and Lily actually tells her husband that she believes that she was the last person to see Jake Hayes and she continues to tell Christian everything that happened and Christian is determined that nobody ever finds out what actually happened and that Lily was the last person to see Jake. And so you're following Nina's perspective as she is desperately trying to find Jake and you're following Christian's perspective as he's desperately trying to make it so Nina does not find Jake. So overall I felt like this was a pretty solid reading experience. I enjoyed myself from start to finish. I wanted to find out what happened to Jake. Is he dead? Is he alive? Is he missing? What happened when Lily encountered him and why is Christian so desperate to keep it covered up? But this is another one that I feel was overall pretty just mediocre and it is probably one that is not going to stay in my memory. I think I settled on a 3.5 stars for this one because like I said overall I had a very positive reading experience but one thing I will say is that I didn't love the twist and if you've read this story you'll probably know what I'm talking about but there is a specific kind of trope that happens at the end of this in terms of the whodunit and I don't love that kind of trope. It's actually something that I actively avoid in books and I don't like reading about it. Was it a possibility that I had considered throughout the book? Yes but I was still ultimately kind of disappointed in that even though I know for sure that a lot of people might not have seen it coming it just wasn't one that I loved. So overall I'm giving this a 3.5 stars. I'm glad that I have seen what she's able to do. I'm glad that I have this one and like I said overall it was a pretty solid reading experience but I just don't know if I'm going to continue. For February's book of the month I selected The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartsch. This is one of my most anticipated releases for 2023 because I think it's going to have some of those isolation aspects that I like. This follows our main character Alex and she has always wanted to be a writer but she's kind of given up hope on ever being published but then one day she's actually invited to an exclusive writing retreat that is being held by a very notable feminist horror author named Rosa and once everybody gets to the retreat a bombshell is kind of dropped on them. They are told that they are going to be expected to start and finish a novel from scratch while they are there. They can't continue anything that they've been working on and the person who is deemed to have written the best novel within that time frame is going to be offered a life-changing six-figure publishing deal and so naturally everybody at this point becomes very competitive. They want this publishing deal and Alex is going to buckle down and she is going to get it done but soon she starts to kind of realize that things are not right. Things that she's seeing going on with Rosa and some of the other writers there and then one of the writers goes missing and it kind of goes from there. This is Julia Bartz's debut so I have no idea what I'm in for but I am here for it. These next two that I'm going to talk about I actually got as part of February's Aardvark book box. I did a recent video where I pitted book of the month against Aardvark because they are two very comparable bookish subscription services. If you have not already seen that video I will be sure to link it down below for you but the February selection that I chose was The Sweet Spot by Amy Pobel. This was a wonderful delightful charming heartwarming story that I wasn't expecting to love as much as I did. This is basically a comedy of errors that follows three women who are ultimately connected by another woman and what happens when that woman's baby ends up getting left with them unexpectedly and how they have to kind of come together to help care for this baby but what this baby ends up kind of teaching them all and helping them with and they're all dealing with their own things and they all have to kind of overcome it and they find the strength to do that through each other and through helping this child and it was just wonderful. I loved it so much. This cast of characters in here they're quirky, they're zany, they're fantastic. You can't help but fall in love with each and every one of them and this actually does have a full cast of narration so while the main character characters are the three women and that's primarily who you're following. You're also following a handful of other characters that are prominent in here and you get some of their perspectives. So really really enjoy this and I'm excited to see more from Amy Popel in the future because I had never heard of her before and this ended up blowing me away way more than I thought it would. And then the final book that I'm hauling today was the add-on that I got for Aardvark and that is Key to My Heart by Leah Lewis. This follows our main character Natalie who basically seems to have everything going for her until her husband unexpectedly dies and then at the start of the story it has been two years later and she is still very very much in her grief. She is basically just existing. She's not really doing much with herself. And then it says, when someone begins to leave mysterious messages for Natalie at the local train station's piano where she plays, she begins to feel a sense of hope and excitement for the first time since her husband's death. Before long, she finds herself on an unexpected journey toward newfound love for herself, for life, and maybe for a special someone. I absolutely love books focusing on grief because I feel like it's such a universal emotion. We have all lost people that we love. And if we haven't, we're going to. Like, it's just going to happen. And we all grieve very differently. We handle that in very different ways. And I love to see books that explore that and it sounds like this is going to follow Natalie as she is going through that grief and what happens when she tries to pull herself out of it and overcome it and the hope that can come along with it. And so I'm super excited to go ahead and get to this one. I hope to get to this one possibly in March. So stay tuned. So this next one I'm actually going to kind of talk about as a haul and an 
unhaul because I hauled it in January for January's book of the month box but I'm also going to unhaul it because I didn't really enjoy it and that is the final revival of Opal and Nev by Donnie Bolton. So this is a book that is continuously compared to Daisy Jones and the Six because it does follow musicians in the 1970s so you do have that sex drugs and rock and roll aspect and it is told in the oral history style format so it's told in interview style there is a full cast of characters for the audiobook the audiobook was absolutely fantastic but I didn't get what I wanted from this so whereas Daisy Jones I felt was entirely focused on the music and the complex character dynamics this was more focused overall on racial politics and while that was definitely important especially in the context of the turmoil of the 1970s that's not what I was hoping for going in and on top of that I didn't really feel like the characters were fully realized in the story they didn't feel real to me at the end of Daisy Jones I felt like I could finish that book and go listen to the album by Daisy Jones and the Six I did not feel that in here at all in fact I don't even feel like this book gave you a good solid grip on what kind of music that they produced and it really was all about Opal and hardly about Nev at all this is following a duo of musicians Opal and Nev so Nev is basically looking for a partner that he can create music with and he discovers Opal and it kind of goes from there but I really felt this was more about Opal than Nev and this story is actually being told by a woman named Sunny and Sunny is the editor of a magazine and she's been given the rights to Opal and Nev's story so she is the one that's doing the interviewing in here but she has a personal connection kind of because her father was actually the drummer for Opal and Nev once upon a time but he was tragically killed at a showcase that they were playing and so the showcase is featured heavily in this story and Sunny has always kind of been fascinated by Opal because Opal had a romantic relationship with her father while her father was married to Sunny's mother so you're definitely getting a lot of Sunny's perspective in here which I didn't really feel was necessary and kind of takes you out of the whole story so overall there was just a lot of this story that didn't work for me it wasn't nearly as strong as I wanted it I was absolutely going in expecting it to be very different in terms of plot but I was still expecting to get a lot of the music and complex character dynamics that I got in Daisy Jones and I just didn't unfortunately it didn't work for me so I am going to be unhauling this I'm also going to be unhauling Grace and Fury by Tracy Banghart this was the first book in a YA duology I believe I don't believe it went beyond a duology and I actually really enjoyed this this was a great time but I read this a couple of years ago and since I've now almost entirely moved away from YA I don't have any compulsion to continue even though this was a really solid reading experience for me and so because I don't plan on continuing I don't necessarily feel like I need to keep it on my shelves I also have the librarian of Auschwitz by Antonio Iturbe this has been sitting on my shelves for several years at this point and it's survived many an unhaul because it definitely sounds like something that I would love I love historical fiction set in World War II there's always been something that has prevented me from picking it up like there's something about it that makes me not want to pick it up and when I found out that this is kind of following a 14 year old it says 14 year old Dita is one of the many imprisoned by the Nazis at Auschwitz displaced along with her mother and father from their home in Prague first to the capital city's ghetto then northward to the Terezin settlement and now to Auschwitz in Poland Dita is adjusting to the constant terror that is life in the camp when Jewish leader Freddie Hirsch asks Dita to take charge of the eight precious volumes the prisoners have managed to sneak past the guards she agrees becoming the librarian of Auschwitz so this on the outset does really sound phenomenal but there's just something about the fact that it's following a 14 year old that's not clicking with me I feel like this is going to be a little bit more YA than I want it to be in fact this might be a YA and I just am now realizing that for some reason I was thinking that this was adult I could be completely wrong but that really could be one thing that is causing me not to want to read it I'm not entirely sure so I think I'm just going to go ahead and pass this along if I do end up wanting to read it in the future I can easily get it from my library so it's not that big of a deal okay so next I have a handful of Christina Lauren books y'all know if you have watched my recent wrap-ups and that vlog that I did reading romance I just don't think I can continue with Christina Lauren they're way too hit or miss for me and even their hits are not super strong the highest I've ever rated a book of theirs is four stars even then I don't think they were crazy memorable or substantial or anything like that and so I really just don't feel the need to continue with them and a lot of them I just really didn't enjoy so first I have dating you hating you I really don't remember almost anything about the plot except this was a hate to love romance between co-workers kind of reminiscent of the hating game and I didn't love this there were a lot of technical issues that I had with this so it was three stars definitely didn't love gonna go ahead and get rid of my favorite half night stand is probably one of the worst books that I ever read by them I hated this book with a passion it does feature catfishing which I didn't love I didn't love the whole relationship between the two main characters in here any of it and so I'm definitely getting rid of this one Josh and Hazel's guide to not dating was pleasant for the most part I had no real issues with this overall but it was just another mediocre read nothing memorable at all nothing substantial at all I'm not gonna remember anything about this in a couple of years in fact I really don't remember anything about this now it's got to go and finally I have the soulmate equation I actually have not read this book but I no longer plan to read this book so it is going to go next I have kiss her once for me by Allison Cochran I received this as part of the holiday edition for authentics books box and it was okay it was a sweet sapphic romance it was an overall enjoyable reading experience but again nothing substantial there was nothing really mind-blowing about this it was just a fun time it does feature a fake dating trope in here and I really liked the female love interests as well but again this isn't something that I'm ever going to remember I didn't really emotionally connect to it and I don't feel the need to keep it on my 
my shelves. Then I have the Rewind by Alison Winscotch. This was another one that I received from Authentic Book Box. And this is another one that just was okay overall. It follows our two main characters, Frankie and Ezra. They were college sweethearts and they actually broke up the day of graduation in a very contentious breakup. They never planned on seeing or speaking to each other ever again. But alas, they are kind of forced to see each other when they are reuniting on their college campus for a mutual friend's wedding. They try to avoid each other, but one day they wake up in their old college dorm. They are together and they are wearing wedding rings and they have no idea what happened. So this book is really all about them trying to piece together what happened. I found this kind of wacky because I don't believe that two people would totally forget the events of the night before no matter what happened to them. One, sure if they drank too much, but two, come on now. That was really unbelievable. And I really felt like this author didn't do a good job of showing the chemistry between them. She definitely did a great job of showing the hate between them. Like I was fully convinced that they did not belong together, but she didn't do a good job of convincing me that they should be back together. So there wasn't a lot of chemistry I felt between these characters, but yet all of a sudden by the end of it, after 10 years of hating each other and then only being back in each other's presence for 24 hours, they're suddenly willing to give it a try. It just, it didn't connect with me emotionally like I wanted it to. So I'm glad that I read it because I was able to end 2022 with this book, but it is not something I feel the need to keep on my shelves. Next, I have The Highland Fling by Megan Quinn. So this was a very cute, fun romance that follows two American women that go to Scotland to kind of run this coffee shop as a way to kind of run away and get away from everything that is troubling them. And one of the main characters ends up in a relationship with the son of the couple that own the coffee shop. And he's like this gruff, surly guy. You know, she's the sunshine to his grump and, and it goes from there. This has such an amazingly funny scene in it near the beginning of the story when they're just arriving in Scotland. And it's worth listening to the audiobook just for that scene. It was hilarious. I was laughing out loud, busting up. And that scene is going to stick with me for a very, very long time. But the overall story, not necessarily will. There wasn't anything mind blowing about the story overall. It was cute. It was sweet. It was fun. Is it something that I need to keep? No, I'm going to pass it along to somebody else who might have as good of a time with it as I did. And that's worth more to me than just having this hang around on my shelves. So it's going to go. Then I have All the Dark Places by Terry Peralto. Another one that was from Authentic Books Box. I'm kind of striking out with Authentic Books and that's not their fault. That's mine because I actually get to choose the books that are sent to me or skip the box. And so the books that I'm choosing aren't like doing what I want them to do. I actually didn't even finish this book. I started listening to it. I got a few pages in and hated the writing, hated how basic it was. And I could just tell that the whole entirety of this book was going to be that way. And so I stopped. I just could not even handle it. So this was a dud from the very, very beginning because it doesn't even like necessarily sound like anything super memorable anyway. It says snow falls softly outside Molly Bradley's home on a frigid January night. Inside half a dozen close friends are gathered to celebrate the 40th birthday of Molly's psychologist husband, Jay. Everybody loves Jay, Molly most of all. Yet next morning, Molly discovers Jay dead on the floor of his office, his throat brutally slashed. After decades working with the Boston PD, detective Rita Myers has grown accustomed to the banality of evil, the murders that make no sense beyond bad luck or a tragic brush with the worst of humanity. But Jay Bradley's murder isn't random or a mere crime of opportunity. Rita is convinced that someone in the couple's small circle killed him, someone who was celebrating with them that night. Devastated, Molly tries to make sense of her husband's death. Jay was her rock, the only person who really understood the nightmare she lived through long ago. He knew the horrors she's kept hidden from even her friends, but shocking revelations are making her question if Jay was all he seemed to be and whether someone else knows her past too. And until Molly figures out who she can really trust, she won't be able to stop herself from becoming the next target. Target. So I really like the idea of this story because it sounds multi-layered because on the one hand you have the person who murdered Jane You're trying to figure that out who could have possibly wanted him dead But then you're also uncovering the fact that Molly herself has a secret that she has been hiding and that possibly could have Contributed to Jay's death. So there are definitely multiple layers here That was intriguing to me, but I couldn't get past the basicness of the writing style I wanted more from it and could I have given it more of a chance? Yes, absolutely But why waste my time? I guess I could keep it and wait for a, a time when I'm in a better mindset and maybe more patient to continue But again, why when there are so many other books that I know that I want to read and that I'm so excited to read. So I think that this is just going to have to go. And I think somebody else is going to be really excited to get this because this is a brand new release. And so I'm happy to pass it along. All right, y'all, that is it. Those are all the books that I have hauled and unhauled for January and February. Please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of these books and what your thoughts are. And again, all of the books that I'm unhauling will eventually be in my Pango bookshop. I don't know when I'm going to have the time to list them all, but if you follow me, you will be notified when I have uploaded these books. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I post two videos a week, sometimes three, if I have my shit together and a third video to film, and I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys.